where we speak the truth, we are honest, and we take on AEW. It is, hold on a second, is my camera rolling? Okay, there we go. It is Wednesday night, February 15th, 2023. Not flying solo this week. I am here with my co-host of the Big Fight Fuel channel for AEW on Wednesday nights. Wesley Williams is in the house tonight, man. What's going on, Wes? Is my Wi-Fi coming in good? It's coming in real well, man. Uh, I hope I'm coming in good on your end as well. Uh, it's great to be back uh, talking AEW, man. We're on the road to Revolution. We're gearing closer and closer to March 5th, and uh, we got some more matches announced for the card uh, on March 5th that we will get into uh, discussion about. But uh, it's looking great. Revolution setting up to look like a really great show, and uh, I thought it was a pretty solid show tonight from AEW. Uh, felt more like almost, almost a bit more like a filler show compared to last week, but uh, but I, I I like the way they're shaping up. They're building towards Revolution, trying to build up a lot of feuds. So I at least appreciate the fact that we're building towards the pay per view coming up, and uh, it should be a great show. Yeah, we were last week under the weather, feeling sick. It happens. A lot of people I feel like are getting sick around this time. But man, you we were talking about it off camera last last week. Freaking sh- the match quality of last week might have been the best ever in AEW's history with those three matches that we had last week. Not really much of match quality um, this week, but um, I guess building more uh, for the pay-per-view that we have coming up on March 5th, which is um, Revolution. Um, What was your favorite out of the three matches we had last week? I don't want to talk about the past, but last week was so good. You weren't here. I kind of want to talk about it a little bit. I think the the Roosh Danielson match was was probably my favorite uh, out, out of the matches last week. I, I thought those two guys. I mean, I thought Takeshi and Danielson already delivered a, a tremendous match of the year candidate, in which they did. But uh, I, I think Roosh and Danielson outdid that when we had that match last week. Those two guys just went in balls to the wall with that match. It was it was absolutely amazing to watch. I'd say that out of the the matches from last week, I'd say Roosh and Danielson definitely tore the house down in El Paso. And gotta give a shout out to the El Paso crowd, man. They were Fired up all night for those two hours. Loved it. Uh, got do more shows in El Paso, please, AEW, because I love crowds like that for sure. I just want more shows in Texas. I feel like that Texas every time AEW goes there, I just feel like man, they're freaking blowing it out of the water, man. It's unbelievable how electric and how amazing the Texas crowd is whenever they go when whenever AEW goes to Texas, whether it's uh San Antonio or Dallas or El Paso, the night they were in Laredo, Texas, they're just really loud and passionate. So shout out to Laredo, Texas. And before we get into the show, Wes, we had uh, some really we had some big news today. I don't know if you caught up on this, but uh, Ring of Honor is having the finally, finally, Ring of Honor is having their first uh, television tapings the premiere episode of ring of honor on honor club is going to be thursday march 2nd that is one year to the exact date that tony khan announced that he was buying ring of honor and the tapings um for ring of honor tv are going to be at no other none other than universal studios in orlando florida and if I can get tickets to go to Ring of Honor next weekend, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to both tapings, and I'm going to make it a good time. But, man, I feel like we've been waiting for Ring of Honor TV tapings for a very long time. We want Ring of Honor to have their own television show. We got it. And the premiere episode is March 2nd. I have more to talk about with this, but I want to hear from you first on this. Yeah, uh, I heard the news uh, before Dynamite today. And uh, it's great to hear. Uh, we've been waiting for so long for an announcement for some sort of TV deal or streaming deal for Ring of Honor. And we finally got it on uh, Honor Club starting Thursday, March 2nd. Very excited about it. I, I think I, I will be tuning in uh, for the weekly shows. And now we can finally start, you know, focusing on the Ring of Honor stuff on a Ring of Honor product instead of throwing the Ring of Honor stuff on AEW television where, you know, you really need to focus more on your own titles and everything. I mean, it's it's fine if you want to have some of these Ring of Honor guys around to do stuff on AEW television, but just pa- have the focus mainly on the AEW titles and the AEW storylines. And I'm hoping now, you know, I'm hoping with, with this Ring of Honor show, I'm hoping we can get 
kind of like that feel from like what NXT used to be, you know, where it was like, we got these, you know, hey, I don't know how long the show is going to be. I imagine maybe it'll just be an hour long show. I don't know what the length will be, but uh, I think an hour will be perfect. Just give it that, that kind of old NXT feel, feel where it was at when it was at full cell university, the black mm-hmm. and gold NXT that we, we remember and we know and love. And I'm hoping that's the feel we can get with this ring of honor products. You know, we got, we got some great guys already set up for that roster. You got Samoa Joe, who's television champion. You got Claudio, the world champion. You got Mark Briscoe, who's still one half of the Ring of Honor Tag Champions. I'm not sure what the state of that will really be. I'm sure we'll get more into that once that TV show lands. And, uh, I mean, you got the, they got the trios titles as well. I mean, you got a lot of different guys there that you can, you know, rotate. And you got guys in AEW and women in AEW as well that you can rotate around and, and uh, float around the Ring of Honor. You got Athena as the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And I'm just hoping we can get uh, just a solid product week to week. Uh, and then they can help really build up to these Ring of Honor pay-per-views. And now that it's starting March 2nd, our next uh, Ring of Honor pay-per-view is Supercard of Honor, March 31st. So I'm hoping that that month of March will be the great start to building up to that pay-per-view at the end of the month. And uh, I'm very excited for it, man. Uh, we, we've been waiting for this news. And I and it's 10 bucks a month for Honor Club. So if y'all can afford it out there, I, I recommend you just go ahead and do it. Uh, and, and it's kind of going in with the times, too, because a lot of different things are on streaming services now. And it seems like cable is really kind of becoming a thing of the past now. Everybody's devoting a lot to streaming services. I think this is a great deal for, for Tony Khan, for Ring of Honor, for all the talent within Ring of Honor. So I'm very excited about it. Yeah. I mean... I'll probably do it, but I don't know if I'll need to do it if I possibly uh, am actually attending the tapings. But this is what I'm taught. This is what uh, when people say AEW has a loaded roster and they really do, Wes, they really do have a loaded roster, but they have guys that they don't use and they have guys that aren't getting pushed all the time. And I feel like ring of honor is a great platform for them. Now, is it really, is it really key? Uh, Is it really, I guess, key for these guys to get paid thousands and thousands of dollars to wrestle on, uh, on, on honor club? Yes, because, um, because, it's better than doing nothing. And I think these guys that aren't getting television time on AEW, guys like Brian Cage, even though he's been getting a lot of matches on AEW recently, um, get time on Ring of Honor. And I think that's what I want to see the most. I want to see the guys who don't get a lot of showcase on AEW. I want to see them get showcased on Ring of Honor. So um, that's what I'm looking out for this. And just for the, uh, I guess, arena perspective, I, I, I don't watch Dark all the time. I don't have time to watch Dark. I have a lot of things going on in my life, but they need to pack that, they need to pack that arena more than they do for Dark. You cannot have, because here's the, 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 the magic thing with NXT when they were at Full Sail University is it's in a very small arena, but it's super loud. And that's what we, that's what they need for Ring of Honor because they had around 500 people at Full Sail for NXT. If Tony can fit 500 people in for Ring of Honor, I, I feel like that would be great, and I feel like that would be that would be much needed for um, for the show uh, to get to get some noise. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm excited. It's about damn time, man. It's about damn time that Ring of Honor got their own television show. And we don't need to see it playing out on AEW television. We can see it playing out on Ring of Honor television. So now that we talked about that, let's get into the actual show itself. We opened up with a, uh eight-man tag. It was Orange Cassidy teaming up with the acclaimed and daddy ass to face Jay Lethal, uh, Jeff Jarrett, uh, Satnam Singh, and Sanjay Dudd. Uh, by the way, before we move into anything about this match, uh, Jeff Jarrett's dad unfortunately passed away. My thoughts and prayers are going to Jeff Jarrett at this time with his dad, um, who passed away yesterday. So, very sorry to hear that. But Wes, we have new, before we talk about this match, 
We have new AEW Tag Team Champions. The acclaimed are no longer the Tag Team Champions. And a lot of people were very upset with it. Some people were okay with it. But the majority of the people were upset with this decision. Where do you lie? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I, I get the polarizing reaction. I do. Um, I know we talked with Cam, too. I know Cam wasn't very happy about it either. Um, you know, the gun club are, are fine. You know, I, I feel like they're definitely, I mean, they, they, at the very least, they get a reaction from the crowd. They do. Uh, they, they get the ass voice chants every week. So it's not like they put it on guys who are just like ice cold and nobody like, you know, it makes any like has any kind of reaction to. Um, I kind of figured it was going to head in this direction, though. I figured that they claimed. They've held the titles. Uh, it, it really, it, it seems, it's funny because they've held the, they held the titles for like nearly half a year. It didn't even feel like they held the titles nearly half a year, but just goes to show you how fast time flies these days. But, um, yeah. but you know, they claim we're, we're doing good with those titles. And, uh, and I, I think they, they will one day become champs again. Uh, I know they, you know, we'll get into it more of it later, but, uh, you know, they are set to be in the, you know, at the, at revolution to face up with the gun club again. We got that, and uh, and and yeah, I, I feel like I just kind of saw this route coming, and, and I'm not, re- I can't really say I'm completely upset about it. I I, I get it, you know. Uh, I just hope that like this doesn't backfire completely on AEW because the tag titles have been, you know, some of the, the most important. Probably still, I would still say they're the most important tag titles in all for wrestling. You know, even with you know we have the Usos as the undisputed tag champions of WWE and, you know, the bloodline stuff. I've been keeping up with the bloodlines. Tammy saying what, I mean, masterclass storytelling. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, but I would still say the AEW tag titles, I mean, have been treated as like the most important tag titles in all wrestling. I'm just hoping that with the gun club, hopefully they can have enough like good feuds and good, and, you know, can get enough heel heat on themselves to where they're having a, a, a good reign to where like, you know, people are really wanting to see those tiles come off of them for like the right reasons. And so we'll see how this goes. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not I'm not completely in love with the fact they won the tag titles, but at the same time, I'm not like super upset because I understood that it was kind of heading this direction because you have the backstory with the Acclaim and the Gun Club already and the whole, you know, Billy Gunn, you know, choosing the Acclaim over his own kids because the Gun Club turned on Billy. So it's just, you know, you do have the backstory there at least, but uh and the match I thought last week that what they had was was fine. You know, uh, it, it you know it, it could probably could have been a bit of a better match to like do the title change. But you know, we're we're gonna see these two guys come at it again. You know, and we'll get into more of the match card for Revolution coming up in the review. But uh, but yeah, I mean that that's kind of my my overall thoughts on it. You know, not not in love with it, but you know, not super upset about it at the same time. Yeah, we'll actually tie that storyline and what's gonna happen at the pay per view. Um, into this match, uh, into the opening match that we had, which was, um, it was, um, it was the eight man tag. It was basically a comedy match. If you like comedy in your wrestling, uh, it wasn't a great match. It was comedy. The acclaimed beat, uh, the heels, uh, with the scissor me timbers onto Sanjay Dutt. Of course he took the pin. So the baby faces win and everybody scissored. So if that was if you like comedy, this was your match. But um, the bigger picture later on in the night, in the night, uh, Excalibur announced that the Guns are going to make their first tag team title defense at Revolution. Um, originally, it was going to be a triple threat match, and then he claimed in a backstage interview later in the night said, you know. That triple threat at Revolution, that's going to turn into a fatal four-way because the Acclaimed are invoking the rematch clause uh, for the Revolution pay-per-view, which I'm shocked that we're not just getting straight up the Acclaimed and the Guns again so that we do uh, Daddy S turning heel at the Acclaimed because I thought about it last week and I'm like, man, they could do this rematch at the pay-per-view and, you know, Daddy S turning on the acclaimed. I mean, that's a huge payoff because let's be real. Daddy S is a really, he's a main part of the, he's a main reason why the acclaimed are so over uh, the way that they are. So doing that on pay per view, man, that's a big deal, Wes. That's a really big deal. But now you, 
you play this fatal four way into factor and you know, I don't know what could happen. I, I don't I really don't know what could happen. We have um my screen's going weird. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Um, so we have this fatal four way. Next week there's an original battle royal to go to revolution, and then the following week there's a casino battle royal. So two straight weeks we have battle royals. Yippee, I hate battle royals, but it is what it is. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? We're getting a fatal four-way, and uh, your prediction on who the two teams are going to be going to the pay-per-view. Obviously, I don't think they're going to win, but... Yeah, uh, I was a bit surprised myself they didn't just do a rematch with the Acclaimed and the, the Gun Club. I, I figured that they were going to go that route, but uh, they wanted to make it a multi-person uh, tag team time match, which could be more fun, and, and we will probably get a, end up getting a, a, a great match still. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like just doing the normal tag team title match with the Guns and with the Acclaim would have made a little bit more sense. And like you mentioned, the, the Billy Gun uh, heel turn, which I, I feel like is still could still be on the rise, could still be happening uh, coming up, and we'll see what goes on with that. But, yeah, I was a bit surprised with that. But uh, as far as uh, who could come back, we, they did show the lineup for the Battle Royal next week uh, who, uh, for that first Battle Royal. Um, I saw the Lucha Brothers were in there. I saw the Best Friends were in there. Um, I believe uh, I believe Reynolds and Silver might have been in that as well. I'm not completely sure. But uh, I would love – I would not mind seeing the Lucha Brothers get involved. In I mean, Lucha Brothers are always, always guaranteeing you a great match when, whenever they're involved. Uh, it'd be cool to see them just be there just because they, they've been former tag team champions and they would add to the overall uh, you know, overall just star, star uh, power of the match and just uh, adding to that overall feel and just making the match that much better. And uh, I'm not sure who they got planned for the Casino Battle Royal. Um, Lucha Brothers, I, I think, could be a very, you know, very well be a part of that. Uh, I could see the best friends as well. Um, I would not, I really would not mind Reynolds and Silver uh, being involved, but uh, it seems like the Dark Order has been more involved with uh, what's going on between Hangman and Moxley, and they got the Black Bull Com- Combat Club. So, uh, you know, those are just a few teams I, I wouldn't mi- mind. I wouldn't mind seeing um, for the for the fill in those two spots, but. Uh, it should still be uh, an overall, I think, great tag team match. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. elements to it, and uh, I think the crowd's gonna go get you know, gonna be pretty hot for it. Maybe you can open the show with it. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, I feel like when it comes to tag team wrestling and the tag team titles, the AEW hardly ever does us wrong, <laughs> and they always end up delivering you know a, a great quality match. So uh, I, I'm I'm still looking forward to it. It should be fun. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I think the two teams are actually, I agree with you, the Lucha Brothers. I was going to say FTR, but I don't know what they're doing. Like, I don't know what's going on with FTR right now. Hopefully they don't leave because I know their contracts expire pretty soon. Um, but I'm going to say the Lucha Bros, and I'm going to say the Butcher and the Blade. They're getting, a lot of, they're getting some quality TV time right now, man. Good for them. And, uh, you know... They're with Kip Sabian. I don't really care about that pairing, but you know what? Shit, the Butcher and Blade deserve more TV time. The Butcher, he's bald now. He looks even more scarier now than he was before, man. So uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty intimidating, man. He, I think it looks better on him, though. I, I like the bald look on him. I think it looks good. Yeah. So we're gonna move on here, and uh, we're gonna talk about him after this match, where we got some breaking news coming from Tony Khan. He just released a tweet saying that Mark Briscoe is all elite. Nice. Nice. Love that. Love that for him, man. Mark, Mark Briscoe. And yeah, we're going to be talking about the Mark Briscoe match against uh, Josh Woods. But uh, I love that for Mark Briscoe, man. I love the fact that, you know, Warner Media has allowed him to wrestle on television uh, for, for, uh, for Dynamite and then for AEW. I, I love that for him, man, because he really deserves it. And uh, and him and, and Jay also deserved it as well. Yeah, you know, the, the Briscoe should have been on television long ago. You know, I, I mean, it's it's something that was just long overdue. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy to see that Mark's getting the TV time. He's officially all elite. Very happy for the guy. Yeah, we're gonna talk about him in a little bit. Before that, we got a uh, Texas Tornado match with John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. They teamed up to face uh, LFI Roosh against uh, Preston Vance. Talked about that Supercard of Honor show a little bit, bro. I think your main event of that show 
has to be Roosh against Claudio Castagnoli. I mean, after the match Roosh had last week against Brian Danielson, I think he de- I think he deserves at least a main event slot for that pay per view. Do I think he's going to win the world championship? Uh, that I don't know. I can't. I, I'm not going to make a prediction on that right now. But I think that deserves to be your main event for the Supercard of Honor show March 31st. As of for this match, it's probably the best match on the show. It was very br- violent. It was brutal. Uh, John Moxley was bleeding because, of course, he was. Uh, Preston Vance was also bleeding as well. And, uh, you know, they were fighting in the crowd before the match. LFI attacked the Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, they were using chairs. Um, this match was chaos, man. Chaos. Uh, bleeding. John Moxley used the chain uh, to do the uh, elbows to Preston Vance. And um, he ended up choking him out. He choked out Preston Vance. And the Blackpool Combat Club defeated uh, Roosh and, and uh, Preston Vance. So, fun match, man. Probably match of the night. What did you think? Yeah, I agree. I, I think this was the best match of the night. Just a bloody brawl between uh, four these four guys here. And uh, and I agree with you as well. With uh, I, I believe the main event of Supercard of Honor should definitely be Claudio versus Roosh for the Ring of Honor World title. I think those two guys would deliver a barn burner. And, and like you said, after last week, that match Roosh had against Brian Danielson, I feel like that, that performance he put on alone uh, should earn him that spot uh, in the main event of Supercard uh, on March 31st. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, great stuff all around. Uh, all four guys just went in, all guns blazing, just beat the living shit out of each other. It was great. Uh, yeah, I agree. Match of the night. Yeah, I loved it, man. Uh, now let's get into Mark Briscoe. Uh, he went one on one tonight with uh, Josh Woods. Uh, he got the win, and I'm ha- I'm I'm just happy to see this guy uh, on AEW. The Briscoe should have been on AEW television. Let's be honest. Um, you know, I'm we're still st- we're still very upset with the passing of Jay Briscoe, uh, 38 years old. But I mean, I kind of don't like the way that Warner Media took this because, like, I don't need to get political here, but you know, the fact that it took them for Jay Briscoe to pass away, kind of, to allow Mark Briscoe to uh, get on AEW television. It's kind of shady for me, man. I don't know if I'm getting too personal with it, but I find that to be uh, very shady um, from my perspective. But um, they did the right thing. Uh, They allowed Mark Briscoe on uh, AEW TV. That match against Jay Lethal a couple weeks ago, very, very emotional match. Everybody standing up on the stage. uh, uh, Great. Great. being there for Mark Briscoe, you know, that was very, that was an awesome moment. Um, and Tony's doing amazing things with, with the Briscoe family, and we love it, man. Mark Briscoe, he's all elite, and um, I love it. Start my, start, start, uh, Mark Briscoe for TNT champion. What do you think, man? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think Mark, he honestly deserves so much. Um, you know, honestly, with, with Ring of Honor getting its, uh, its television show now going, uh, I'm not sure what the state of the Ring of Honor tag titles will be. Uh, I know, you know, Mark is obviously the sole holder of those titles. Uh, I would imagine they would have to vacate them because there's just no way Mark can defend those titles by himself. Um, but I, I do believe Mark should definitely hold a title, whether, whether it's AEW or Ring of Honor. I feel like the guy he's put in all this work for all these years, he deserves a big singles run. And I, I feel like he's just, and he, I saw him um, for hearing the crowd tonight in Laredo, uh, this go absolutely berserk for him in the match against Josh Woods. I mean, I loved it, man. It just, it goes to show you that Mark Briscoe is, is over and, and people love the guy and he's just very, he's got this in, in, infatuation about him that, that people just draw to. And, and, and I love that. And that they need to keep that rolling and they, they keep to keep the ball rolling with, with Mark with that. And, uh, you know, honestly, if they wanted to in Ring of Honor, man, I, I would. I mean, Jay Briscoe was a former Ring of Honor World Champion. Why not Mark? You know, Mark's just as just as great, and, and, I, and people love him. Uh, you know, a, a lot too. And I feel like he definitely 
could uh, could uh, is def- I feel like he's definitely worthy of a run with the Ring of Honor World Title, and uh, I feel like that's something uh, I would love to see uh, sometime in the in the future for him. Um, but regardless, man, it's just, it's great to see him on television. It's great to see him wrestling. It's great to see him in good spirits, uh, despite everything that's happened uh, with with, with, um, with everything in his family and, and with, with the unfortunate passing of Jay Briscoe. Uh, it's great to just see that he's been staying strong throughout. And uh, has been just been able to carry through and just continue to wrestle uh, for all the fans, man. It's 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 just, it's heart, very heartwarming, and you love seeing stuff like that, man. And you know, I send all my love to to Marks, you know, and I wish him nothing but the best. And uh, I think he's one of the best pro wrestlers you'll find on, on the planet. And uh, he's been grinding and busting his ass for years, and I feel like he deserves a, a big run. Man, they could tell an amazing story. With Mark Briscoe chasing for the Ring of Honor World Championship. They need an absolute villain of a heel to be the Ring of Honor World Champion. Who that guy is, I don't know. Maybe Samoa Joe's a a future Ring of Honor World Champion. We know how much of a villain he can be. Um, But man, Jay Briscoe is the Ring of Honor World Champion. Why not, Mark? You know, you could tell the emotional story that, you know... Do it for Jay Briscoe or whatever. Uh, with uh, he's been through so much, Mark Briscoe, um, with his brother unfortunately passing away, and um, they could just tell such a great story with him chasing for the world championship. I gotta figure soon. I gotta figure in the next year that they, they gotta do it right. right. They have to. Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel like it's definitely got gotta be something they they should definitely build up. And uh, again, it's like I said. I mean, he's he's busted his ass for years. And I feel like he definitely deserves it, man. And I feel like the crowd can 100% get behind it just very organically. And it would just, it would be, it'd be wonderful, man. It'd be like the true, it'd be a true underdog story too for Mark. And I think everybody loves a, an underdog story. So. He's over now. Imagine how over he would be chasing for the world title of Ring of Honor. Yeah. I mean, I, just shoot, shoot off all the, all the, you know, pyro and give him the confetti, all the confetti and everything, man. He, de- he deserves all of it. Give, give him his flowers, you know. <laughs> I, I was saying he should be the TNT champion, man. I'm changing my mind for the war to be the, I mean, he's all elite. I'm happy about that. He's going to be on AEW television more than off, more, more often uh, now, but man. Mark Briscoe for Ring of Honor World Champion. I would love to see that one. Just have just have Samoa Joe be the one to take off the title from Claudio and then have Joe go through opponents. And then you're off to the races with Mark Briscoe. It would be phenomenal, man. That would that would be awesome. That that would be such a cool story to tell. So uh, but we'll see. I hope I hope you're right. I really do. Um, we have, uh, MJF, MJF came out to a chorus of boos and last week he attacked Brian Danielson after, after the match against, uh, Roosh. He now has to defend his title in a 60 minute Iron Man match against, against, against Brian Danielson. Um, so he cut a promo. He cut a fine promo. Uh, not one of his best, but it, it's an MJF promo. So, of course, it's going to be really good. Um, he finishes up his promo. And then he says, he says, now I'm going to bring out a man who, um, who's known Brian Danielson for his entire career and is going to tell you the truth about him of how he really is. And he introduces Christopher Daniels. And I thought this I thought this was excellent, man. I loved this. Getting the insight from Christopher Daniels. MJF apparently paid Christopher Daniels money to talk about how bad of a wrestler Brian Danielson is. And Daniel says, you know, a younger version of me would take the money. But right now, that's not who I am. And he throws the money to the ground. And he says, when I wrestled 20-year-old Brian Danielson and he chopped me so hard, at that point I knew that Brian Danielson was going to be something great. And Brian Danielson went all over the world 
in Japan, um, promotions all over the world. He brought up Ring of Honor, didn't bring up WWE, but he talked about he talked about um, the accomplishments of Brian Danielson's career and how happy he was when he was the world champion, when he won his first world championship. And he tells MJF now, Brian Danielson is on a completely different level from MJF. And this whole storyline is that MJF thinks Brian Danielson's a shitty wrestler and Brian Danielson doesn't think that MJF is going to be able to hang with him for 60 seconds. For not 60 seconds, an hour, 60 minutes. Um, and Chris Daniels had this one line. I'm going to pull it up on my phone right now because I, I remembered to put this um, in my notes. He said, at Revolution, Brian Danielson is going to set Daniel. Brian Danielson is set to knock your dick in the dirt. I fucking laughed so hard at that man. That that got a big pop from the Laredo crowd. MJF was pissed off. He told Daniels that that he was lying. He started pushing Daniels. Daniels pushed him back. MJF hit the uh he put the uh uh this uh the salt of the earth on uh, on Daniels. And Brian Danielson came out for the save, and MJF ran off. So that was the angle. That was the segment. I thought the Christopher Daniels part was great. I really enjoyed that part of the segment. What did you think about it? Yeah, I thought this was a, a very effective segment. I, I love the fact that they involved Christopher Daniels, somebody who's been a longtime friend uh, and opponent uh, of Brian Danielson, and just come out and just endorse Brian and let, just remind MJF who, who Brian Danielson is and the type of man he'll be stepping in the ring with March 5th uh, in the 60-minute Iron Man match. I love it. It adds, it adds another element to the story. And uh, I've been loving this storyline. I've been, I've been really enjoying the way they've been building this up and having Brian go through these gauntlet of opponents to finally get that shot at MJF uh, for, this, uh, for the uh, world title 60-minute Iron Man uh, revolution. Uh, uh, this is going to be a barn burner. You know, these two guys are going to go out there and, and kill it. And, uh, and MJF, you know, is, is out to prove to Brian Danielson that he can hang and that he is, the, he is the best in the world for a reason. There, there, there is a reason why he is the AEW world champion is because he believes that he is the best in the world and he wants to go out and prove it against the best wrestlers in the world. And Brian Danielson is, is one of those wrestlers on that list. And, uh, and I thought this was a, a great segment. Uh, and it adds more heel heat on MJF too for for uh, you know beating up Christopher Daniels and uh, and I, I love it man and uh, MJF you know you know any anything involved with him he, he's gonna turn into gold and you can't take anything away from Brian Daniels as well I love the fire and passion that Brian's been bringing to this feud as well and you know trying to you know get into MJF's head just screw with him mentally and and just remind him that you know you can't hang with me you know you might be the world champion but I, I I'm better than you I have the the advantage over you so i love it man it's, it's quality storytelling and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to their uh their match coming up on march 5th yeah i think it's gonna i think danielson is gonna bring the best out of mjf i don't know how it's gonna go but i mean we're three weeks out of the pay-per-view i don't think mjf is gonna drop the title this soon it's gonna be so shocking when Tony Schiavone, just imagine Tony Schiavone on television, uh, on commentary, be like, how the world did, did, did MJF outlast Brian Danielson in 60 minutes? Man, and then the trash talk from MJF, the pay-per-view after, oh my goodness. Mm. It, it's going to be fantastic, man. I can't wait. I, I really can't wait. I, I love, love the way they're going with this storyline. If it wasn't for... Sami Zayn in the bloodline. I mean, obviously, that's just on a different level than everything else in wrestling right now. This would probably be probably the best thing going on in wrestling is this feud between Brian Danielson and MJF. But obviously, we have Sami Zayn in the bloodline. Um, Jungle Boy, he went one-on-one -on -one with Brian Cage. Uh, this was not about the match. Jungle Boy 
got the win over Brian Cage in a roll-up. This was about the post-match angle as we got the return of Christian Cage who sprayed cold spray into the eyes of Jungle Boy. He took off his arm cast, threw it to the ground, and gave Jungle Boy a kill switch. And it seems like at Revolution, it's going to be Christian Cage against Jungle Boy. Love that Christian's back. Glad to see him. I, I mean, I don't know if he just got cleared, but we are literally three weeks out from the pay-per-view. I wish he came back earlier so that we could get some more build for this match, but I mean, I don't know. I guess you can make the argument of, well, they've been building to this match for ever since Christian turned on Jungle Boy. So I, I'm just, I'm happy Christian's back because I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know where they were going with Jungle Boy before the pay-per-view. I'm like, man, I have no idea what they're going to do with him at Revolution. And Christian's back and it's like, bam, we're going to resume that. Christian's finally going to put over Jungle Boy. And I think that's the direction they're going with. What do you think about this? Yeah, very happy to see Christian back. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to see Jungle Boy now in a, in a big feud again because it, it seemed like, you know, before Christian came back, they, they were trying to kind of fill time with Jungle Boy, try to find, try to have him do other stuff on the side uh, until Christian was uh, medically cleared to come back. And it seems like he's definitely medically cleared as he took off the arm cast and, uh, Form the kill switch on the Jungle Boy on the stage, uh, and I, I love it, man. I'm very much looking forward to uh, their match, which, which is more than likely coming up here at Revolution. It's just all but announced. Um, but yeah, great to see Christian back, healthy, and I think these two guys. I mean, they already, you know, put on so you know some really good uh, matches together, and uh, and I, and you know, funny enough, the no Luchasaurus tonight either. I don't know if Luchasaurus is still uh involved with christian at all for maybe we'll see him at revolution by chance but yeah i did i did notice no luchasaurus sighting tonight so i don't know if he's still involved or not but uh but it's just great to see christian back and healthy and uh, i'm very much looking forward to uh him and jungle boys match coming up more than mo- most likely it's all been announced at uh revolution yeah we have not seen we have not seen luchasaurus since the steel cage match at full gear so i do expect him to see him um, in a matter of weeks leading up to the pay-per-view. Um, but, uh, I, dude, I don't think that... I don't know. For the, for a feud like this and for a personal feud like Jungle Boy and Christian Cage, obviously Christian got injured, so he had to go away for... He couldn't wrestle for a very long time, for like five months. Do they blow this off in a singles match? Do they end the feud with Christian and Jungle Boy in a singles match? I just don't see that happening. Maybe, maybe, maybe they do add a gimmick to it. I'm sure. I mean, you know, they, they could they could do. It. I mean, it's, it's been such a blood feud boiling over for quite some time. I mean, maybe they do add a gimmick to it. Um, and you know, if, if Luchasaurus is going to be involved again, it'd be interesting to see how what his involvement will be in all this and, and how he'll he might factor into into the storyline since he's been a part of the storyline as well. So yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, maybe maybe we might just get a one on one match, but. I mean, with this view being so, you know, being such a blood feud, being so personal, I mean, maybe we get maybe we get a gimmick thrown to it. But uh, I know we already have a couple gimmick matches set up for Revolution, so maybe they don't want to overdo it too much with the gimmick matches for the pay-per-view. Uh, but we'll see, man. I, I, I think regardless, though, we're, we're bound to get something great between these two guys. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they do. Um, Adam Hangman Page. He went one on one with Kip Sabian. They try to build sympathy and they try to question they try to make you think that Kip Sabian attacked Hangman backstage earlier the night. They try to make you think, oh, Hangman's not gonna make the match. He's banged up from the attack backstage. Um, Hangman came out and he easily beat Kip Sabian in a matter of minutes. So I don't think we're gonna talk about the match because the post match angle was much bigger than the match. We had John Moxley come out with members of the Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Castagnoli and Willa Yuta come out and Moxley approached MJF, uh, not MJF, Hangman Page. And he said, you know, I don't need 
another match with you. I know you're dying to have another match with John Moxley. But for Moxley's sake, he's cool with what happened in the last match. He said he's he said he's beaten him. He's beaten Hangman Page. He's got nothing left to prove to Hangman Page. He says that he's gained his respect, but he doesn't fear him, not a single ounce. And Hangman said, "You know what? I'm not happy with the way the last result end, and I don't think you are either. Deep down, I don't think you are either." And he said, "You're just gonna. We're just gonna end the feud on an old school fashion roll up." I don't think John. I don't think you're content with that, John. So then John Moxley talks about how he starts getting into Hangman Page having no friends, and the Dark Order come out, and Hangman Page looks kind of. He looks pissed off. He does not want the Dark Order to be out there. I don't think Hangman wants to associate himself with the Dark Order anymore, and. Evil Luna comes out and he's trying to defend Hangman Page and Hangman's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Get out of here!" All this stuff and Hang- and Evil Luna, he's getting in the face of John Moxley. He pushes him, he pushes him in the face, and John Moxley talks on the microphone. He completely ignored Evil Uno and was like, "Cowboy, revolution." Texas death match. So there you go. I think we saw the writing on the wall for this one that it was going to be a Texas death match between um John Moxley and Hangman Page. I didn't know where they I didn't know what story they were trying to tell. I guess the stories now with Hangman Page's friendships with the Dark Order once again which I think they're going to end pretty soon. Uh, what are your thoughts on all of this? Moxley, Hangman Page, they're going to end the feud uh, at Revolution. They're going to do it in a Texas death match. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's a great idea. I think uh, these two guys ending it with a, a match as big as a, as a Texas death match is the right way to go about it. These two guys have been killing each other uh, over the course of, you know, how many ever weeks and months at this point? And, and, and these two guys are just, you know, what, they're out to prove who the better man is in this feud. They're out to prove who who is truly the best and who truly is, you know, the the guy at, at the top for AEW. It, despite, it, despite it not being for the world title, they, they're they out to prove who who is the better man. And and I think uh, doing it with a Texas death match with these two guys is a great way to go about it. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to these two guys just completely going balls to the wall, just go out there just to kill each other and just to beat them down until there's only one man left standing. I think this is definitely the right way to go about it, and I think it's going to be great. And uh, the Dark Order, I, I, did, I did like the intensity that Evil Uno showed when he came out and he pushed Moxley's face, and I, I did enjoy that that level of intensity shown on the Dark Order, you know, because they usually, I know, are you know, used to, we're used to the whole co- comedy, goofy stuff with them, but it's nice to see that edge to them a little bit. Yes. And uh, it'd be cool to see a little bit more of that from them. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as like the future of Hangman and the Dark Order goes, I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think it will last that much longer. Uh, I don't know if the Dark Order gets, you know, super involved in the Texas death match on uh, at Revolution on March 5th. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not completely sure. I, I feel like it honestly should just be solely between Hangman and Moxley, and they should really just duke it out until there's only one man left standing. Um, and so I, I think that's the way they should really go about it. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how they continue to tell the story. But uh, this is another feud I've been really enjoying a lot. I've been really enjoying the build. And uh, we, we shall see March 5th, who comes out the better man and uh, who, who, you know, truly is better than better than the other. Yep. Absolutely. So um, before we get into the main event, we got uh, Revolution. We got a lot of matches announced tonight, man. We got, got obviously the 60 minute Iron Man match was announced last week. We got a fatal four way for the tag team titles. Forgot to talk about this segment. And I thought this was a great segment. We had a sit-down interview 
between Jim Ross and Wardlow. And I did not care about this feud. I still don't know if I do, but this interview was great. And Wardlow told a great story about his father when he was a young kid. He really didn't have a great connection with his father. And then once he had got older, he started to love and appreciate his father more. And as a youngster, he really started his journey as a wrestler. And at the age of 18, he learned that his father had stage four cancer and he wasn't going to have long to live. About a year later, he got a call uh, from his father. And uh, actually, his father attended his first wrestling show. So his father was able to see Wardlow wrestle in person at, a, at some independent show. And then the next day, um, he visits his, ho- his father, who's in hospice at the hospital. And he tells him a quote. I can't remember what I can't remember exactly what it was, but he tells him a quote that sticks with Wardlow. And unfortunately, his his father does pass away um, from stage four cancer. And after that moment, Wardlow decided that he was going to grow everything out. He was going to grow his beard, and he was going to grow his hair. Um, as a connection to his father. And he told Joe about that story. And when Joe cut off Wardlow's ponytail, he cut off his, he cut off the connection to his father. So that I believe uh, that was a great explanation as to why Samoa Joe cut off the, the, uh, the ponytail of Wardlow. And it makes the feud personal now with Wardlow and Samoa Joe. What did you think about this, Wes? Floor is yeah, yours. I, I loved it. Uh, I think it definitely it, it added a much needed element to this feud because I feel like a lot of people are, you know, airing the same sentiment. They didn't really care much for this feud and the the constant flip flopping of the TNT title that we've been seeing. Um, but I feel like adding this element to the story and something that you know is true to life with. with Wardlow growing out his hair and, and growing a beard, like he grow, doing all that just in honor of his father. And, and the fact that Joe cut his hair and, and took that away from him uh, just made him that much more pissed off and that much, gave him that much more of a drive to just go after Joe and, and get back what's rightfully his, and that's the TNT title. I love it. And it's, it's, story, it's, uh, it's elements like that that we need to see in storytelling, like always. We need to see this that added, that added boost that it needs to really make it the feud you know, mean mean more and the fa- and make it more per- even make it a little bit more personal, but just have it mean more to where the audience is now gravitated more towards that storyline. So what makes wrestling storylines great too is that you just you add different elements to it. You add little bits and pieces, and when it all comes together like a puzzle, I mean, there you go. You got the formula for a successful storyline. So I really I enjoy the fact that they they did this uh, this sit down interview, and uh, and again it, it adds that much needed element to the feud. And uh, to the upcoming TNT title match between both Wardlow and Joe, come Revolution should be a great big man brawl. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this tonight. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, I really enjoyed this because going into this, there was no story between Wardlow and Samoa Joe. It's just, okay, Joe took him out. Now Wardlow's looking to get revenge. That's not captivating enough. Now, Wardlow reveals that that ponytail was to keep a connection with him and his father. And now, that pisses Wardlow off even more. And he wants even more revenge to go after the TNT title. And I think it makes it that much better. And I think, does this give more sympathy to Wardlow, you think? I think so. I I think definitely it... it, uh... Well, I mean, Wardlow's already still over with the crowd. I think this will help him, his his uh, his over overness even more and help him, help him gain more of that fanfare uh, heading into the match with Joe. Yeah, I agree. I agree because he really because when he returned, Darby Allen uh, or Joe beat Darby Allen, 
J- J- Wardlow returned, and I didn't feel anything. The crowd gave him a great pop, but when Wardlow came back, I'm like, okay, Wardlow's back. And now they tell this story, and it's like, okay, now I can, I, now I can get interested in this. Because I like the story they're telling. So I thought that interview with Jim Ross was, was, was great. I love that interview so much. Um, the main event was a triple threat match. Women's triple threat match. L- love seeing the women main event on AEW. Um, we had Tony Storm versus Ruby Soho versus Britt Baker. And the story about this is where does Ruby Soho ride? Where does she lie? Is she with the originals or is she with the outsiders? Um, the match was fine. Ruby um, won the match um, after there was some, uh, apparently triple. Th- I don't know why people were complaining about there was Soraya and Tony Storm fighting. Triple threat matches. They're technically no DQ, right? Yep. So Soraya is in there. She's attacking Britt Baker. Tony Storm, she attacks Jamie Hayter. Um, and then Soraya, she takes the spray and she sprays the letter L onto Tony Storm's ass. I'm sure um, for, the, uh, for the geeks out there, I'm sure a lot of people would like to be Soraya. So. Um, for the geeks out there, for the for the simp's out there, I'm sure they would like to be Soraya. But anyway, Soraya sprays the letter L onto Tony Storm's ass. Tony Storm does the hip attack to uh, to Britt Baker, but Ruby and then she hits Britt Baker with the DDT. Uh, Ruby then throws Tony outside of the ring, and Ruby steals the pinfall. And then Soraya gets in the ring. She is screaming at Ruby. Jamie Hayter is screaming at Ruby. And Ruby is just, she's over this. She doesn't want to be a part of this. So both of them leave. And Ruby is just standing in the middle of the ring by herself. And she the show goes off the air with Ruby Soho being conflicted. I'm shocked by the way this ended. The way I thought this was going to end was Ruby was going to turn heel and she was going to join up with Tony Storm and Soraya because that's where I think this is going. I think she's going to uh, turn on uh, she's going to turn on um, on the baby faces and join the outsiders. I originally I thought that was going to happen tonight and then the originals were going to get saved by the returning Thunder Rosa, because apparently she was in town. She, apparently she's making a return for AEW, and we were going to set up a six-woman tag um, with Thunder Rosa joining forces with Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. We did not get that tonight. Instead, we ended the show with a conflicted Ruby Soho. thought the match was good. I'm interested in this storyline. It's been a while. Since I was interested in a storyline in AEW, probably since Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. Yeah. What do you think about all of this? Yeah, um, I, I'm especially happy for Ruby So that she's getting more spotlight now because I, I it feels like she was just sitting in a sea of nothing for forever, and uh, it seemed like they were just really wasting her. But I'm not. It's, I'm happy to see that she's got involved here and she it looks like she's probably next in line for the uh the women's title going into revolution so ruby sober jamie Hayter, sign me up uh, i'm i would very much like to see that um uh it, it's definitely interesting where, where ruby's alliances lie and then you know you talked about thunder rosa you know she sees due back soon i know she, they as they said uh or she announced herself that uh she'd be joining aw spanish announce team uh, for a little bit while she still recovers from her injury. So it's cool to see her, you know, get get involved at least a little bit before she does officially come back. Um, and then I heard, I did hear earlier tonight that they did hold a major talent meeting regarding Thunder Rosa and her, I think her status with the company. So I think they just wanted to maybe go over some things. I know there was like talk about like 
backstage possible backstage heat on her because I think she had some quarrels with some of the talent in AEW. So I think they were just trying to maybe trying to maybe smooth that out and, and, and try to get uh, everything settled with Thunder Rosa and the rest of the locker room. Um, but yeah, it, this will be interesting to watch uh, going forward. But it looks like with Ruby getting this win tonight, we will be seeing Ruby in the title picture going into Revolution, which you know, like I said. Uh, I'm a fan of that, and it's and again, it's just nice to see Ruby Soho involved in something big now and not be just thrown to the wolves, just not really being a part of anything, just like thrown on a random episode of Rampage here and there, and that's kind of that. You know, it's it's good to see her get that spotlight because I feel like, you know, she she does deserve it, and, uh, and uh, now that she's getting involved seemingly with the women's title picture, I think that's a really great thing, and uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how everything kind of ties together. Uh, going forward and into the pay-per-view and what might uh, transpire there. Hey, man, if we're getting Ruby, if the direction is Ruby against Jamie Hayter at the pay-per-view, sign me up. I think they would have a great match. And then maybe she makes her decision there. So we'll see what happens. But I really like the direction AEW's in, man. I didn't really like the way they were in 2022. The last couple weeks, it's been really good. And, uh, man, we're on the road to revolution, and it, 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 lo- it looks like it's going to be a fun show, man. So we got two more weeks, and uh, we're there. We're at revolution. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Fuel channel. We got some more content coming up on the way. Um, we got some basketball content tomorrow. Sixers, West, Memphis Grizzlies are doing good again, man. Yep, we got the win tonight over the Jazz. Thank, thank goodness we got the win going into All Star break. And now John and Jaron are going to be competing in the All Star game. Got to check the game out on Saturday, I believe. I believe the game's on Saturday. Got to check that out. See how my boys do. Go Grizz. Hopefully we can continue to, you know, stay up on the top at the Western Conference, man. And uh, best of luck to your 76ers as well over in the East. Appreciate it, man. So check out some Sixers content tomorrow on the channel. Comment down below your thoughts on tonight's AEW show. Um, hit the like button if you like what you heard from us tonight. And follow me on Twitter and TikTok at Conlon underscore Joseph. Uh, Wes, where can they follow you, man? Well, you already know. Follow me over on Instagram at the Real Wesley Snipes. You can also follow me over on TikTok with the same exact username. Again, that is at the Real Wesley Snipes. Joseph, it was a pleasure getting to be back on the AW Dynamite Reviews, man. We're just a few weeks away from Revolution. Again, we've been talking about it throughout the whole review. Very excited about it. Great to be back on the channel to talk great, do some great wrestling content. And uh, hopefully, you know, next time we get together, we'll have our boy Cam back with us, have the the, the, the big trio back for the for the views, man. But uh, thank you so much again for having me and uh, send us send the crowd home, man. Hey, man, hopefully we all get together for next week's show. So um, but thank you guys so much for joining us, joining us tonight. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, have a good one. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy. And we out. Peace.